Hi hobby friends, let's talk about the salamanders. We're going old school today, all the way back to the 31st millennium. I, like many people it seems, picked up one of those giant Age of Darkness boxes not so long ago, and the time to paint them has finally come. A little poll here on YouTube, followed with another poll of my patrons to make the final selection, landed us with the salamanders as the loyalist half of the box. And I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with my viewers and patrons' choice here. This green scheme gave me a chance to go back and revisit, with some modifications of course, one of my favourite underpainting experiment results. If you haven't seen the underpainting experiment videos yet, it might seem a little bit weird that I'm basing all these little chaps in red, but I promise it'll all make sense. And the unintuitiveness doesn't end with the base coat either. When the burgundy is down, I moved on to a bright primary red, covering more or less all of the mini. Honestly, if you have a bright red that works as a base coat, you could probably skip the burgundy altogether, but I don't, so dual coat it is. Next colour to go down is a pastel peach, which I'm using here as our first bit of lighting information. A pretty thorough mids coverage over everything here. That red stays where I want serious shadow and everything else gets peachy. And when all that's down, I hit them with this chartreuse highlight. I'm still covering probably a little more area here than you might expect for what is ostensibly our last highlight colour, and we're not looking at all like your average salamander, but everything should come together in the next step. At last, some green, specifically the yellow shade of Thalo Cyanine Green Ink from Liquitex, cut about two parts to one with Liquitex's matte varnish. This is definitely my new favourite way to work with inks. The matte varnish has loads of body, making the inks a little easier to work with, plus it dilutes them a little, again taming them a bit, and as a bonus, they dry matte so you can see much more clearly what you're doing. These Liquitex varnishes come in big economical bottles, and obviously work as regular varnishes as well, straight through the airbrush with no thinning. Thanks to Geordie over on Geordie Crafts for the recommendation here, she has a very cool channel so go check that out. As you can see, this thin layer of transparent green mixes with the layers below, giving us really gorgeous colour depth. The red mixes down to a rich chromatic black, the peach supports and warms up the mid-tones, and the chartreuse makes the highlights really sing. In fact, I leave basically pure chartreuse as the very highest highlight spots to really make the armour panels pop. It may seem a backwards approach, but this sort of chromatic underpainting can have some really cool effects. Alright, after singing the praises of matte varnish, my next step was to go in and gloss varnish every guy. A little bit backwards maybe, but so it goes sometimes. With everyone looking shiny, I pulled out my lamp black oil paint, some low odour white spirits and a chunky flat brush and gave all the little dudes a good coating of thinned black oil paint. I'm doing this at an early stage this time because I'm less interested in the oil paint for weathering and more interested in them as a panel liner. I could go in and carefully blackline everything later, but we're batch painting here and every minute counts. By the time the last one is done, we're ready to go back to the first one and start cleaning up. Again, I forego my usual delicate cotton buds here because I'm not looking for any subtle modulation or anything. I want my recesses shaded and maybe a little griminess here and there and that's it. And that was day one all done. Day two, with the oils definitely completely dry, it was time to remat these little chaps. And when that was done, to fix a primary colour for the base. If you want to practice some more precise airbrushing work, use it to base coat your bases. You'll definitely need to be careful going around your little dude's feet and find some clever angles to handle those between the legs rocks and the likes, but the chances of ruining something beyond redemption is pretty low, and if you do get a little overspray here and there, just call it mud or dust. Plus, it saves a ton of time. And now we're onto the brushwork at last, kicking off with this slightly off-black charcoal colour. 
I chose this because I thought it would be good to have somewhere to go for blacker blacks in the shadows, just in case, and because it still reads as black while having a bit more of a burnt feeling, which is good for the salamanders, I reckon. I didn't really take advantage of the black shadows in the end, so if you wanted to go the extra mile, that might be an area to look at in this scheme. Weapons and pauldrons are all blacked up now, and it's time to hit the leather bits, starting with this tan colour from Vallejo. Obviously there are a million ways to handle leather, but this is my old reliable recipe for when I want no fuss, good looking results. Pipey details next, and a good opportunity to get some fiery red in there. Little details like this really round out a mini, and when you get into the rhythm of it, don't add that much time or effort to your paint job. Metallics were the next base coat to tackle, starting with gunmetal silver on blades and backpack boosters, and then copper on the backpack heat sinks, the chest thing, the belt buckles, and those gazillion little rivets. And that was me, done for the day. Roll on day three. Now, just because we're speed painting doesn't mean we can get away with low effort metallics, so I grabbed my favourite so-called skin wash ink from Vallejo and got to work shading all the copper bits. Since we're going with a red earth basing scheme here, I also gave the bottom bits of those thrusters a quick lick of this bronzy colour too, simulating a reflection of the ground. Finally, for the skin ink, all the leather also got a full wash of this, giving us a really natural, good looking leather effect. Really coming together now, we need to get those weapons popping a bit more though, so I grabbed my gun metal again, and with a little scratchy dry brush I went to town, dry brushing out the details. The leather also needs a bit of wear and tear, so I went in again with a targeted dry brush, and this time in two stages, once with the original tan colour, and then again with a stubby little brush and a lighter brown, I emulated some scratches and marks on the leather, speed painter style, with just a few brush swishes per leather bit. Alright, since we're in dry brush land, let's get those bases done as well, starting with a fairly heavy dry brush of high saturation red, and then a lighter swoosh with ice yellow. Don't be afraid of giant leaps in tone when dry brushing, it can get you some really impactful results. Off camera, at the very end of the paint job, the bases got a dusting of brown iron oxide pigment powder as well. We're in the final stretch here now, lenses get the usual treatment of a dark to light fade, with the added twist of a little glaze of orange fluorescent paint at the end to really make them pop, just before I add the specular highlight with a little touch of white paint in the corner. And those edges need a highlight too. Two tones of grey for the black pauldron, and a lime green for the armour. The very top edges of the armour also get a tiny bit of pure yellow as well. And with day three on the clock, the Heresy Error Salamanders are all done. But something's not right here, they, they look like they need some company, don't they? And the eagle-eyed viewer might have spotted in the background of some of these shots that they did in fact have some company. I mean, why not get five little terminators done at the same time as 20 marines? And since we're working, it would be good if they had a way to get around too, so heck, let's give them a tank as well. Now, I didn't quite get to the Praetor, which would have gotten me exactly half the Age of Darkness box done up, but I still feel pretty happy with my three days work here. What do you think? If you liked this video, hit that subscribe button because in the not too distant future the heretics are going to get a little reinforcement, and that promises to be a real doozy of a job. You can also find links to a great little Discord server, and if you really want to help out, you can join my Patreon as well. I get back to all the questions you guys leave below as well, so ask away in the comments. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.